Hi, I'm Lindsay Hassett, and I'm also known as Betty Biodiesel. So we're here in Sebastopol, California, and we're engaged in a project with Laguna High School's uh, Interact Club, and it's a biodiesel project that we're going to be doing a feasibility study on looking at the waste oil available in Sebastopol and greater area to convert into biodiesel to put into school buses. It's not very complicated and it's just so much cheaper than actual gas that it would be really beneficial for our school buses to be on it. The youth that are the ones that are riding in the bus are the ones with the sensitive lung fibers in their bodies, um, their asthma gets you know further exacerbated. All of those things are issues that we can absolutely take care of by blending biodiesel into school buses. I um, think just like making like putting your voice out there and letting everyone else know kind of like just getting other people involved, our friends and just you know community and stuff. That's probably the hardest part, yeah, yes, is to just, get out there and just talk to people. So we're about to go and learn from Dave Erickson with the Climate Protection Campaign, who's himself a big biodiesel advocate. He just ha he decided to buy another um, vehicle for his family, and he bought a diesel truck, and then decided to take it a step further and make his own biodiesel processor and become a home brewer. So he's going to take us through the whole steps of collecting the oil, how um, you process it, what kind of chemical reaction you, it, it takes place, and then how it ends up as biodiesel. The effect of the consumption of soy for Biodiesel is affecting the, and then the, also the consumption of corn for ethanol is affecting the cattle industry and the feed industry. It's basically fuel meets food. It's definitely going to be our age and our children and grandchildren, you know, more than, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's definitely a future issue. It's been a wonderful learning opportunity for them. Not only, not only learning, but it's really, it's really what they said about the next generation and there's just so many things involved here. We talk about climate issues and global warming and alternative fuels and the economy and not being dependent upon foreign oil. And it's a school board that will make decisions about whether the transportation is going to use it's going to use this fuel. So um, they're the ones that will educate our school board. I just am really passionate about the youth being involved. Oftentimes you get more of the adults that are very interested, um, but meanwhile we've got youth that are learning science and all kinds of uh, educational things going on in school, but they were the ones that are the direct recipient of the indoor air pollution of the buses, and they're the ones that really want to have be turned on by the fact that they have a voice, their voice is very important, and youth empowering other youth are um, a crucial part of it, and that's why green ambassadors out in the world are so needed. So I'm really proud of the youth that have stepped forward at Laguna High School to do this project.